Welcome back everyone. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into the basics of making and refining selections in Affinity Photo 2. That's how you can go from this AI-generated image of a beautiful woman to this, well, somewhat distorted version. So let's dive in. I started with this wonderful image I created from Leonardo.ai. I'll grab the selection brush tool from the left-hand toolbar. It's the little paintbrush looking icon with the dotted circle behind it. Like all paintbrush tools, you can make the brush head bigger or smaller by clicking the right or left square bracket keys located next to the P on your keyboard. I'll paint over the woman's body. Notice how Affinity automatically guesses her outline. You can see those marching ant dots indicating what is bordering the selection. To undo a section that you included by accident, simply hold the Option or Alt key while painting to remove it. I'll use a smaller brush to go over obvious areas that I want to include. Don't worry if it's not perfect. The idea here is to get as much as possible with the initial pass. We'll get to the details in a second. All right, now that I've made sure that everything I want is included in the selection, I'll click the Refine button in the top toolbar. This will bring up a panel that will help me make further refinements to my selection. Note that the preview is set to this reddish overlay mode. Everything that's in red is excluded from my selection. The rest is included. You can change the preview mode to give you different backgrounds by clicking on the preview dropdown. You can make it black, white, black and white, or transparent. In black and white, you can easily see areas in the middle of the selection that you may have missed. You can see this piece of dress strap here. To get rid of it, I'll go to my adjustment brush selections and select foreground. This will allow me to paint away anything that is within the selection. If you make a mistake and go into the black, just click Command or Control Z to undo it. Now, I'll switch it back to Overlay to work on her hair. You can pretty clearly see where we need more work here. To attempt to get in the fine hair strands, I'll switch the adjustment brush to matte. This mode lets Affinity select between what's in the foreground, in this case the hair, and what's in the background. It does a pretty good job, but it's not always perfect. The more contrast you have, the better. You can see here that some parts of her hair worked really well, but the strands around her earring are more difficult. Let's try the other side. You can see here that Affinity gets most of it right away. One way to get into even greater detail is to make your brush head pretty small and to paint away the pixels you don't want. To do this, I'll click on the background adjustment brush first and then try to paint around this spot on her shoulder and some of the areas in between the hairs. I've sped this up a bit so as not to bore you. It sometimes takes a bit of time to get in everything you want. You don't always need to be so precise, but sometimes you do. All right, now this is looking pretty good. To bake in the changes, first go to the output drop down at the bottom of the refine panel. You can select any of these you want. I usually select new layer if I'm confident or new layer with mask if I want to make more adjustments in mask mode later. I'll select that one just in case. Now, if you zoom in and take a look, you can still see some areas that look smudgy. We can get rid of some of this by using another of my favorites, the freehand selection tool. It's the little lasso shaped tool in the left hand tool panel. Just click on it and then drag the cursor to draw a curve around the area you want to select. To complete the curve, release and click again on the little dot at the beginning of the curve. You can delete whatever is within the selection by clicking the delete key. Remember, the selection can apply to any layer. So, make sure that you are on the layer that you want to delete from before deleting. If you make a mistake, you can always click Command-Z to undo it. 
I'll go around and clean this up a bit. Okay, I think this looks pretty good if I do say so for myself. Before I move on to a few other ways to make selections, let me add a nice background other than plain white. I'll go to my Shapes drop-down in the left-hand toolbar and draw out a nice rectangle to cover the whole canvas. I'll go to the Layers panel and drop the Shape layer under the Lady. Then, I'll click the Color Fill box in the top toolbar and I'll spin that outer node around to change the color. I think blue looks nice. Then, I'll grab the Gradient tool in the left-hand toolbar and drag a line from bottom right to top left to make this a bit more interesting. I like it, but I'm going to move it around real quick by dragging the nodes to flip their position. Alright, that looks pretty nice. Now, let's say you want to turn her right eye a different color. You'll want to select that first. Let's zoom in a bit to focus on her AI-generated blue eye. Then, I'll click on the pen tool in the left-hand toolbar. The pen tool, in conjunction with the node tool, is great for making precise selections. I'll make a series of pen marks around the eye to roughly outline it. Then, I'll go to the node tool in the left-hand toolbar and drag a box around all the little white pen marks. This will select them all and turn them into little blue nodes. If I click the smooth button in the top toolbar, Affinity will smooth the curves in between the dots. This does a pretty good job of making a fairly accurate selection. But if you want to make it better, you can click on the dots to move them. Or you can use the little handlebars to change the curve a bit. You can even add extra nodes for more precision by clicking on the curve. Alright, now I have a very precise outline. To turn this into a selection, click back on the pen tool and then click the selection button in the top toolbar. You'll see the little marching ants come out. To change her eye color, make sure to select the top layer with the woman on it and then go to the adjustments button at the bottom of the layers panel. Scroll down to the recolor adjustment and then use the slider to change the color. Pretty cool, huh? Alright, before I move on to the next selection method, I'm going to combine all these top layers into one single pixel layer. First, I'll drop the recolor adjustment onto the woman layer. Then, I'll select all the layers above the background layer. I'll right-click on them and scroll down to Group. Now, I can right-click on the Group layer and select Rasterize to create a single pixel layer. Great! Now, yet another way to make a selection is to use one of the marquee tools in the left-hand toolbar. These have icons that look like dotted rectangles or ellipses. Let's grab the rectangular marquee tool and drag a box across our lady's eyes, head and hair. I'll make sure that the new pixel layer is selected and then click Command or Control X to cut and then Command or Control V to paste this cutout slice into a new layer. I'll click Command or Control D to deselect and then I'll grab the arrow-shaped move tool to drag this slice of her head to the left. If I make another selection at the top of her head, I can move it to the right, giving our model this weird but cool stacked slice effect. All right, now I'm going to undo all these changes by clicking on Command or Control Z a few times. I want to show you another way to select an area. Let me zoom into her right eye a bit. I'll use the Selection Brush tool to paint a small selection around her iris. Then, I'll go to Select in the menu, and then Invert Pixel Selection. You'll see the marching ants around her iris, but also around the perimeter of the whole image. When you invert the selection, you are selecting everything except the area you had originally selected. To demonstrate, I'll do a quick color adjustment Note that everything turns red, except her left eye. Okay, one last thing, and then I'll let you go. One of my favorite effects is to make a selection using the outline of a layer. I'll go to the Artistic Text tool and draw out a large letter I. Then, I'll place it so the top part is across her eyes. Next, I'll go to Select in the menu and choose Selection from Layer. 
notice that those little ants have now completely surrounded the letter. Next, I'll make sure to choose the Lady layer in the Layers panel. Then, I'll click Command or Control C to make a copy of the area under the selection, and then Command or Control V to paste that copy into a new layer. I'll use the little dots to the right of each layer to turn off all of them except this new cutout. Like I said, I love this effect. But to make it even better, let's give it some effects. To do this, I'll go to the FX button at the bottom of the Layers panel. I'll choose 3D to give this a little depth. While we're at it, why don't we give it a little shadow too? There, that looks pretty awesome. All right, that's about it for today. If you learned something and want to see more of this kind of content, please click those like and subscribe buttons. And if you're feeling generous, this channel runs on caffeine. There's a link to buy me a cup of coffee in the descriptions. Not necessary, but certainly appreciated. Have a great day, everyone.